Hello, Simon. Hi, Sebastian. Thank you for taking the time to uh, present some of the new products to us. Um, you are sales director for Europe yep, of Blackmagic, right. and um, you were very much involved, I guess, with the whole evolution of the cameras. And uh, you started with the Blackmagic cinema camera, which was kind of a cube shape. Mm. Um, and now you arrived here. Tell us a little bit about how this process. Sure, people think this one looks a lot more like a camera. I think initially, two, three years ago, people um, found the initial camera design quite strange, although it went on to be a camera that was um, loved by a lot of users. They, they, they rigged it up with all their own accessories, so their own battery devices there. Um, their own uh, rods and rails and mat boxes. Um, so, you know, we, we saw a lot of users actually adapt that camera to include some of the professional functionality that they were really looking for. And I think as we've evolved to now having a range of cameras, we've understood more the kinds of features that users want to see on the camera, whether it's built-in XLR connections for audio, or the SDI video connections, the professional V-Lock battery, uh, so that they've got a, um, a longer lasting power source. All of those different things um, we now see within Ursa Mini. So it, it truly is evolution, and I think that, you know, it's easy to forget that, that as a business, we've only been making cameras for three years. So, you know, compared to a lot of other people within NAB, you know, we're still new kids on the block when it comes to camera manufacturer. And I think that a big part of that evolution is listening to customers and understanding the features that, that they want to see on the camera. So hopefully with Ursa Mini, we now combine all of that experience and the learning that we've done over that three year period and also add that to the, to the listening that we've done. And we've incorporated that within, within this new design. Okay, yeah. In terms of the specs and what we can see, it really seems like you um, listen to the customers, and it's really nice to see that it's, it's very positive. Sure. I mean, I think I think the big one of the big ones was size and weight. Um, you know, if you want a camera that that you want to use as a run and gun camera, and you want to take around a you know an exhibition or an event like this and shoot some interviews, or you're making a documentary or anything of that nature, then really size and weight are you know, important considerations for, for a camera. And this is what the camera body here is one third of the weight of the original Ursa. So we're talking about five pounds, uh, 2.5 kilos. And when you can compare that to the seven and a half kilo uh, within the full size Ursa, um, then clearly this, this is a lot lighter in weight. Now it's designed differently. The full size Ursa, Ursa was, was designed to be operated by multiple people. It was designed more um, in an environment where you would have uh, maybe the sound recordist, uh, director, the DOP, all working around the one camera. Whereas this is going to be used, uh, you know, a lot more individually, um, a lot more personally, and in more of a run and gun type way. Which is why we've got the features we have on it. I mean, some of the some of the ways that that's evolved is that we now have a really cool um, shoulder mount, which is also part of the quick release. So you can snap this onto the top of the tripod, onto the onto the plate and immediately take it off and use it on your shoulder. And it, and it sits on the shoulder really well. So when we sit it on the shoulder there, one of the other accessories that you're gonna see is this thing that we've got on the front. And that's a new uh, Blackmagic viewfinder. So we've got a viewfinder here, which we can set all of the uh, distances from the eye. We can put it on the left side of the camera. We can put it on the right side of the camera. And this is a really, really cool product. So this is $1,500. Um, what's special about it is that it's... It's a great um, price for a viewfinder. It is, and even more so when you look at the spec of, of, of that viewfinder, because um, it's glass, so we're not using plastic in there, it's a, it's, a, it's a glass screen. It's OLED, it's full HD, so it's 1920, 1080, um, and it's 24-bit RGB. The six million pixels in this display, and I know that's all numbers, but what that means for you when you're using it is that it's incredibly clean. And what you don't see is, often with a viewfinder, you, you, you can see the pixels, you can actually see them, and, and, and it, it can be a little bit jagged, a little bit blocky within that viewfinder. This is just crystal clear, and, and it really is beautiful. It's amazing, actually, the number of people already this morning that said, could we fit this to other cameras? 
So I think, you know, already people, people like the look of that. What's um, the answer to that question? Do you know, I, you know, right now we've obviously designed this in such a way that it fits the Ursa Mini and also the full-size Ursa. So we've designed it aesthetically and in terms of the way it sits. Um, to specifically fit on these cameras. That's not to say that one of these clever um, rig manufacturers, whether that's Shape or Zakuta or wooden camera, isn't going to find a way to, to, to mount this to any other type of camera very quickly. Um, so the problem uh, in mounting this to a different camera is the mounting points? Well, yeah, not really. I mean, because all of these are quarter inch threads on the top, you know, very standard connections. Everything about the way we've always designed our cameras has always been not to have proprietary technology. So we use standard size mounting threads. Um, you know, this is SDI, uh, SDI connection for the video. It's got a four pin power connection, 12 volt. There's nothing within that that makes it really difficult that says, well, this is our cable, or this is a specific proprietary connection that's just for black magic. It's, it's very open. Obviously, we've designed it in such a way that these naturally flow into the design of that camera. Um, but that's not to say that you couldn't, you couldn't mount this on, on, on another device. With so many uh, viewfinders out there in the market at the moment, I mean, I think there are like five or six companies that produce these. Why did Blackmagic decide to uh, build their own uh, viewfinder? I think it's a good question. I think that, you know, First and foremost, we were able to design it aesthetically so that it fit the camera. Um, you know, what, one of the things that you do see, you often see the, the viewfinders with, which will work both as a, with a bigger screen, that will work as both a monitor and, a, and an eyepiece. Well, of course, we have built-in monitors, so we didn't need to do that. So we didn't have to have the cap lift up to display a monitor. And then, therefore, we were able to work with a really small screen and keep the viewfinders sort of quite discreet. And I think, again, if, if I put this up onto my shoulder, you know, this is not overtaking the whole front end of the camera um, with a huge piece of apparatus that's getting in the way of other things. This fits very naturally. I mean, I can unscrew this and position it. This hasn't been set for me, you know, in terms of, uh, um, you know, fixing the positions of it. But very easily, you know, I can do that and you know i've got that right on right right on my eye in a perfect situation i maybe take a look sebastian through that just so you can see the oled for yourself in terms of just can it can be can it be reversed so i can look through it with my right eye yes yeah you can you can go left left or right side you could mount it differently or just change the change the eyepiece around um obviously you know you can change the um all of the settings on there to suit your eye uh, to suit your eyesight but the clarity of it is, I think, what stands out most. It, it's, it's so beautifully clean to work with. Um, and I think that was, so the main thing is when you say, why did we do it? I think it was really finding the right solution for the, the Ursa cameras, both for the mini and for the full size Ursa. We wanted something that, that very much complemented um, the, the, the camera in, in look, but also in function so that we could, we could pull our features into the viewfinder so we can um, zoom in on a one-to-one -one so that that helps focusing. We've got a peaking button because we've got focus peaking with all of those cameras. We've got the display for all the overlays, etc. And we can also make these programmable. We can also assign different functions to these which will map directly to the features of our camera. So rather than it being a third-party device, we really felt that, that essentially, you know, a viewfinder is a really great accessory when you're recording, certainly outdoors, bright sunny day in, 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 in the middle of Las Vegas. If you're outside today, then the screen would be really difficult to work with and a viewfinder becomes a pretty essential accessory. You also introduced um, the, how is it called? I forgot the name. That's the video assist. Video assist. Absolutely. Let me but it's not just a video assist. It's not just a monitor. It's more than that. It's more, it, it is more than that. So one of the first things you'll see on this is how, is how small this is. This is a video recorder and video player um, designed to work with any camera. So you could take, you've got HDMI in an SDI in on the side of this unit. It's SDI mini, yeah, it's the small SDI connection, and a full-size HDMI. Um, but you've also got SDI out and HDMI out, so this is also a player that you could walk in and connect to any TV. So maybe if you wanted to go and show 
a client some material, you wanted to show them a, a finished edit or a, you know something to sign off on, you could literally take a device that's only this big with its own battery power source, HDMI cable out to one of their big screen TVs, and you're playing back in beautiful quality. Um, so it's great as a portable device that, that that's big enough just to fit in a, in a in a laptop bag or a rucksack very very simply. So what this does is uh, as well as having the SDI uh, connections in and out. Um, it has the touch screen for all of the menus and the controls, so you would operate everything menu-wise through here. Um, and obviously this is your monitor, it has audio meters, it has histogram, so it's got loads of useful features as well for when you've got it connected to a camera. So you may connect this to a DSLR or, or, or another video camera as a, a, as a monitor. And it records to a built-in SD card. So we've got an SD card reader in there. So these are, these are a standard product that you know, now is very cost effective. It's a very low cost media to record to. And we can record ProRes and DNX HD straight down to that SD card. And the beauty is that you just take that out and you can, you can start to view your material on any other device in the side of a, of a MacBook or a laptop or anything with, a, with, with an SD card reader. So it's very, you know, the technology is, is um, you know, designed to just make it very portable, very easy to use, um, and the price point is, is crazy. Um, it's $495. So for under $500, you're getting a full HD um, recorder, playback device that's battery powered and you can take it and use anywhere. It's very affordable. Um, which flavors of ProRes does it record to? The whole lot. You know, so you All can, of them. You can, you can does choose it do what it... ProRes 4444 4, 4, 4 as well? This is only HD. Um, I'm not sure whether this model has incorporated the new ProRes um, not the XQ. new one, the, not the XQ, I mean, just the, the normal 444. I'd need to check. It certainly goes up to HQ. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it, if, if it does 4444. Do you know how many uh, bits it records in that codec? Uh, it's 10 bit. 10. It's 10 bit, okay. yeah, and ProRes is a 10 bit codec, so, yeah, principally. I think the 444 is a 12 as well. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost and, certain maybe this, it's is, not this the is 10 bit. All right, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to see you. And see you next year. Thanks, Sebastian. <laughs>